start start asking yourself questions, start brainstorming with your own self, start thinking about oh, where do you want to be in 10 years, where do you want to be in five years, and, and start understanding you uh, if you don't know it now. Because a lot of people, when, when I do life coaching, ask them, hey, you know, uh, where do you want to be in five years? What do you like? What makes you feel loved? What are you, what are you going to do if you have 50 million in your account? What are you going to do? What are you going to fill your eight hours mm. with? And many people are like, they're so surprised because nobody has ever asked them that question because they're yeah. so external focused, right? Rather than focusing on themselves. And, and that was my big change when my dad died at age 40. I was, I was, I've been an employee all my life, right? I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was envying people around me being an entrepreneur, but I, I was in a successful job. I took the standard path that kind of society is training you to do. And uh, of course, I enjoyed it. I was lucky enough to work with successful television and radio stations, doing market research, getting into marketing focus groups and, and you know, building brands. So, uh, but then when my dad died, I started to realize, shit, you know, seeing him on the table at the morgue, I realized, hey, I'm next, man. I need to make this uh, the maximum and I need to figure out what I want to do because I was always looking at, you know, what to do. I was looking at people around me. I was too external focused, which is why I'm, 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 I'm saying that to people listening here that, you know, try to look within you, try to understand what you want just because somebody else is, is, is playing soccer with their kids or, or playing baseball with their kids. doesn't mean you have to follow. You can find something else that you enjoy, right? Maximize and be aware and conscious of what you love doing in life. Um, but anyway, well, time, this is about you. Time truly is. Time truly is the most precious asset. And the more successful you get, the more you value it, for sure. It is. It is. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people now are wondering, because uh, everybody here, a lot of people listening that aren't successful yet, they're dreaming of success. They're dreaming of, of, of earning millions, becoming the so-called millionaire, right? Uh, how did you make it? What was your journey? Yeah. How did you make that move? And, and how long did it take? Uh, just walk us through that process, step by step. The more practical, the better. Uh, yeah. So people understand that journey on your end. That might okay. inspire them to do their own. Yeah. Sales. So originally, I, I didn't have real estate on my mind or entrepreneurship on my mind. I was very entrepreneurial. I was a like like I said, a, a hustler from the yeah. standpoint. Like if I wanted something, I would figure out how to create it. But I was also very. I, I as a kid, I didn't know what I wanted, so I, I felt like I was just floating and. I was hanging around a lot of guys that were doing really stupid stuff, lots of drugs, lots of like, just like petty stuff, you know, yeah. like stealing little stuff. And, uh, you know, we would drive around town and shoot people with paintball guns and just like stupid kid stuff. Yep. But, and I wasn't really me. I was always just around them. And then, uh, at some point, uh, a guy named Derek got killed. Uh, a guy named Matt killed a guy named Derek in front of all of us. And it was Dude. kind of like a little mini gang beef type thing. But I, I was like on the peripheral. Like, I didn't really hang out with those guys. Did I hear killed? Them. They killed? Uh, killed? Yeah, he got killed. He got killed. That one, He was bullying. A guy named Derek was bullying a guy named Matt. Matt stole his grandpa's gun, came and showed it to me and my friend Jason. And I, that was the first time I've ever seen like a gun like that. You know, I was like, hey, man, whatever you're doing is stupid. So I kind of distanced myself from them. And like two weeks later, Matt killed Derek uh, in a neighborhood and went on the run. It was like a whole thing in our neighborhood. And it was like when I started really realizing, like, I got to disconnect from this environment. Like, this isn't good. I'm hanging around the wrong people. A lot of my friends were starting to go to juvie or get kicked out of school and stuff like yeah. that. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with, with my life. I knew I didn't want to go to college, but my parents were pressuring me, go to college, go to college. And I went to community college for about three hours. I enrolled. I went for three hours. I left at lunch. I had, I never came back. I was like, screw this. I'm out of here. And I went and I actually enrolled in the Navy. And that was the best thing that I could have ever done for my life because it pulled me out of the environment. I went off, I did four years. And if you are looking for strength, if you are looking for a change, travel, Get out there by yourself. Be, you know, go to these third world countries. See just how lucky you actually are to be where you're, wherever you're from. And and I, it was such hard work. And I was I was on my own for the first time in my life. And I just they taught me inner strength. They taught me morals. They taught me systems and processes. Like everything in the Navy has a process, right? Mm -hmm. Shining your shoes is like a twenty step process. They build and your so character. Got, That's what they do. They build your character. They make they you strong from the within. Yeah, you know? and I just, I mean, I cried a lot. I was a baby. I was overweight. I was unhealthy. I went from smoking weed every day to like not doing any drugs, just getting healthy, staying focused. 
Uh, and then when I was in the Navy, my dad did something else amazing for me. He bought me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right when it came out. And he handed it to me and said, read this when you're out at sea. Great book, man. Great book. And that was the first time I had ever heard of assets and liabilities. Hmm. And while I was reading it, I was thinking about that guy, Michael Polak, whose building I used to walk by. Hmm. And I'm like, this is it. This is the path to freedom. Like, 